uh, the Daily Dot published a uh, article. Happy Happy White Month, by the way. This is August. As far as I'm aware, there's no History Month or Pride Month or anything that takes place in August. So August is the month of white heterosexual uh, nuclear families. Happy 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 White Month, everybody. Um, someone wrote an article about uh, the post leak. Um, Graf was extremely confident in his abilities to protect the privacy of his users, so much so that he didn't warn many of them that they would be a high-value target for hackers. So many of them signed up with their public, you know, their personally identifying email addresses. <clears throat> they didn't use IP VPNs or anything. And many of them did not know, uh, as I, to remind people, I asked Graf, or rather, Graf was uh, criticizing Proton Mail for uh, complying with the Swiss court order. I asked him what he would intend to do if he received a court order for data from the site from Canada, which is where he's based out of, uh, considering that private messages are not encrypted in any way. And he said, if I didn't, if I had an issue with how he handled data, I could fuck off. So I stopped posting them post immediately because um, he's basically telling me to fuck off. But uh, I tried to warn people that DMs are not encrypted on posts, and it didn't seem like the message was really had really gotten out because I don't think a lot of people realize that DMs were just completely unencrypted regular messages on posts. So when it inevitably gets hacked. Not because of any oversight, really, as if you're a operating a small website as a one-man team with no resources, you're inevitably going to get hacked. It's just the reality. So my strategy with the Kiwi Farms has always been to you know make sure that everything is properly backed up in a way that would be very difficult for someone to sabotage and make sure that if the site is completely and totally laid bare for the entire world to see, there's not a single thing on it that puts people in harm's way. That's my that's my risk mitigation uh, strategy. It's a part of my plan of how I run the site. Uh, Post didn't have that, which is why, by the way, if you um, try to register on the Kiwi Farms, you get this enormous message explaining how to manage your privacy because that's part of my strategy as well. Uh, hackers would be dissuaded from even trying to hack the site just because they know that most people are going to register with burner emails and use VPNs. So, which works out for me. Um, again, Graf did not feel that this was necessary. So a lot of people who are very far right on post, who openly, you know, are, are openly neo-Nazis or neo-pagans or whatever the fuck, support the National Justice Party and so on and so forth, they get hacked their work emails, their education emails, their personal emails are discovered in the hack and uh, all their conversation messages are leaked. So you have a very direct link between someone's personal identity and the stuff that they say online and it can be used to um, identify them and ruin their lives. And it could have been avoided um, not by having a perfect security strategy for making sure the site could never possibly get hacked, which is impossible for a small website. It could have been avoided by educating your users on how to protect themselves and to make them aware that even in conversations, if something were to happen to the site, it would be public. And again, I'll, I'll remind people that, you know, conversations on the Cuban farms, uh, if we were hacked, that is plain text, but that's, that's a given. And the conversations on the Kiwi farms purge themselves after a month. So uh, even if there was, you know, because back in the day, people talked very uh, privately with each other and they didn't, they were not, a, you know, the site was not a huge target yet. So the messages automatically prune themselves. So people don't accidentally leave things laying around that haunts them years down the road. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sucks to see. I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy to be like, I told you so, but I did, in fact, tell you so. I tell people a lot of things that I don't get listened to. It's very... I really feel like Cassandra a lot of the time. Because I don't say... I don't try to tell people things out of meanness. I don't warn people about, like, 
debanking and deplatforming and security issues like this out of like a sense of like smug superiority. I really don't. I try to warn people about reality. And then it happens exactly as I warn it. And I don't even get credit for it. I never profit off of these things that I that I talk about. It's a little bit disheartening at times where I, I will accurately pinpoint issues. And when it finally becomes a talking point, nobody ever talks about all the bullshit I had to deal with. <laughs> um, but I am never, I'm never discouraged. I am simply, I am simply Sisyphus. I roll the boulder up the hill and then it rolls back down. And there's no point getting upset at the boulder. It's not the boulder's fault. It just follows gravity. However, if I don't roll the boulder back up the hill, nobody will chat. So, therefore, one must imagine Sisyphus happy. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.